Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Yes, you read the title right. I did buy a graphics card for 55 British pence or 63 US cents. What's more, it actually works. This is the ATI Radeon HD4670 with 512 megabytes of GDDR3 VRAM and supports DirectX 10.1, so of course you won't be expected to play the latest games on it. Released in September of 2008, the GPU is clocked at 750 megahertz while the VRAM is clocked at 1000 MHz and sits in the mid-range of the Radeon HD 4000 series. A 1GB VRAM variant is also available. Now what made me seek out this card in the first place was because I was just doing some casual research on the GeForce 8800 GTS 640MB version and spotted that apparently its performance is comparable to the HD 4670. I decided to check out eBay to see what was available and just so happened to come across one that was going for about 20 pence with a few hours to go. I checked over the listing to check if it was advertisers working, and it was, so I put in a bid for a pound and managed to win it for 55p, plus postage. I'm guessing this isn't a particularly sought after card, and I'm guessing the seller listed it with the starting bid for just a penny. To be honest, they should have just sold it to CEX, as they would have given them £1.60 cash, although they are reselling for £10, which is pretty ridiculous in my opinion. Once I received it, I anxiously fitted it to my test bench and powered it up. Lo and behold, it worked just fine, though the challenge I initially had was getting drivers for Windows 10, which simply don't exist. A quick Google search told me it was simply not possible to get this card to work properly in Windows 10, at least without resorting to modded drivers. Not a problem, I just swapped to an SSD with Windows 7 installed and got the drivers installed there with no issue at all. The test bench I'm using features an i5-3570 clocked at 3.4GHz and 8GB of dual channel RAM, so we're giving the HD4670 the best fighting chance at what we're about to throw at it. We'll start with a couple of benchmarks. Unigen Heaven initially scored 414 with an average of 16.4 FPS. This benchmark caused temperatures to soar to 90 Celsius, so I figured I'd give it some fresh thermal paste and try again. Although we saw temperatures drop to around 75 Celsius, the frame rate also dropped, oddly enough, to an average of 15.2 FPS. However, we did see a higher minimum. Next we have 3D Mark Vantage, a DirectX 10 benchmark. We got a score of 3,561 with a GPU score of 2,796. Now to try out some games. As this card doesn't support DirectX 11 and 12, obviously we can't try out any modding titles. Uh, but we all know, even if we could, the games would be barely playable. So let's try out a few titles spanning from 2008, which is when the card was launched, to 2013. Just to note that I'm playing these titles on a 16x10 monitor with a resolution of 1440x900 while using my capture card at the same time. First is Fallout New Vegas. The launcher recommended the high quality preset, but in my experience these recommended presets are never optimal. So I dropped it to medium. I also enabled VSync so that the frame rate is capped at 60fps, as most Bethesda developed titles don't get on very well with high frame rates. The HD 4670 maintained a frame rate of 60fps most of the time, although we did see frequent frame drops, nothing too noticeable and certainly didn't affect playability. Next is Dishonored from 2012. I kept the default quality settings, which is medium, and was quite surprised at how playable it was. We saw a consistent frame rate between 40 and 50 FPS, depending on how much was going on on the screen.
personnel assigned to the event and approved dignitaries only. This next Hall 2 was a huge surprise. Max settings and we saw frame rates consistently between 45 and 60. I just finished before you had your, well, episode. So now we'll both get to see how they work. There should be one in the corner. Come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. The original release of Skyrim at medium settings gave us 30 FPS consistently, which puts it in console territory. I thought I'd wreak a little havoc in white runs with my uh, Khajiit mage. Red Faction Guerrilla, original, not remastered, low settings. Being a game that heavily revolves around destroying stuff, this has a huge impact on the frame rate depending on what is going on. I'm doing a demolition challenge as a worst case scenario, shall we say. If not a lot is going on, we would see nearly 60 FPS, but once the fun begins, that frame rate will plummet to around 30. Nevertheless, this has no impact on the playability of the game. Metal Gear Rising from 2013, had to drop the resolution to 720p and use lower settings, but we still had frame rates of less than 30 FPS, which had a significant impact on the game's speed too, so not a great experience. Take self-repair units from your foes to replenish your own supply. And finally, the age-old question, will it run Crisis? Of course it will, in lowest graphical settings, mind, but at least we get a highly playable experience. Come on, 
Let's get to Aztec. Fuck. I'm not alone out here. What have you got, Aztec? So to wrap up, I was pleasantly surprised at how capable the HD 4670 is, especially for the price I paid for it. As for how I'm going to use it in future, I'm likely going to pair it with a Core 2 Duo CPU from around the same year. I guess I got lucky with this, but depending on what you're looking for, there are some certainly some bargains to be had. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will see you in the next video.